Hi, my name is Sarah Smith, and I am Assistant Professor of Photography at Pratt MWP and Head of our Photography Area. I'm making this video for you all to give you a deeper look at the photography area and curriculum and talk about what your first two years of the Pratt Photo Program look like. I'll show you images of our facilities and some samples of uh, work that's been made by some of our students. I've also had some of our students make videos talking about their experience being a student here, so hopefully that'll give you a pretty good sense of what our program is like. Also, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you may have um, or our admissions office where they can give you my contact information. I'd much rather uh, be meeting with you in person and be able to answer all of your questions in person and take you personally uh, around the facilities, but my hope is that this video can achieve all of those things. So first, congratulations on your acceptance to our program, and I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing you all and working with you all in the fall. The photography area is one of a few majors at Pratt where incoming freshmen start taking classes within their major right away. So as an incoming freshman into the photography program, the very first class that you'll take is a black and white photography class. This is an analog photography class where you'll be shooting with uh, 35 millimeter cameras, uh, processing and learning how to process your own film uh, and printing in the dark room. We have two film developing rooms that are for individual student use, uh, although they're large enough that multiple students could be processing their film in there at the same time. All of the chemistry is provided to students in the lab, so you don't, um, you don't have to provide any of your own chemistry. The things that you do provide are your film and your paper. We also have two very large black and white dark rooms. Uh, this is an image of the freshman dark room. It's deemed the freshman dark room because it's, an enti it's uh, entirely set up for printing from 35 millimeter film, which is the class that you take as a freshman. Uh, the sophomore dark room is set up for printing both medium and large format film, but looks almost identical to this room, except with uh, different enlargers. As a sophomore, you'll take classes where you'll learn how to shoot both medium and large format uh, using uh, those different kinds of equipment. A major component of the photography program is not just learning how to technically be a better photographer and learning the medium, but also pushing yourself conceptually as an artist and finding your own voice within the photographic medium. Um, so these are both uh, samples of student work that was made in the black and white class by freshmen. The left image is just a, a kind of really wonderful example of a very strong composition. Uh, you know, the attention to line and structure um, and contains sort of art historical compositional references. On the right is an image from a student who's working on a project where we were talking about narrative and constructed images, so staging things specifically for the camera. What's really important and why we start with black and white photography and learning how to shoot film first is that it really forces students to slow down and really learn the medium physically uh, through and through. Shooting with film as opposed to shooting with digital, there's not the same kind of workaround where you can just fix things later in post-production. Um, you know, so you're learning how to shoot film really makes you a better photographer. And, and I've been, uh, you know, teaching for quite some time and it's always been my experience that students um, who are starting with film first uh, end up being much, much stronger photographers in the end. This is samples of some more student work. In the lab, we have multiple light tables to view negatives from. And here you see a light table that has an eight by 10 negative on it. Uh, underneath that is another image from the black and white photography class. And on the right is a large format image shot with a four by five negative. We also explore a variety of alternative processes that still exist within um, traditional black and white photography. You know, so we started the semester learning how to make cyanotypes, 
Um, but these are images from a project that's given at the end of the semester where I teach students a variety of alternative processes that still use all the same chemicals that we use in our black and white class. So students are learning different ways to push the medium beyond what it um, is traditionally thought of when encountering a darkroom practice. Uh, these are more unusual ways of printing and making images in a traditional darkroom without the need um, for extensive amounts of you know, more unusual chemistry. So when you transfer down to the Brooklyn campus, you have options of taking classes specifically in alternative processes, and you'll learn lot, lots of different antique processes within photography um, and explore the history of photography through the processes. In the spring of your freshman year, you'll take a digital photography class, and this serves as an introduction to using digital cameras, uh, editing in Photoshop and Camera Raw and Lightroom, and then learning how to print um, using our large format printers. So in this lab, which is, um, you know, it's part of the photography area, this lab is only for photography students to use. And so you won't be fighting with students in other majors to use this space. This is a space that is specifically set aside for you to use and is managed by the photography area. We have several work study students who are photo majors that help maintain this space uh, as well as a technician for the photography area. Uh, but in this space, we have Mac workstations that are fully equipped with all of the Adobe software um, that you would need. Uh, and then we have multiple large format printers. Two of the printers you can print up to 17 inches wide and one printer that will print up to 24 inches wide on roll paper. So you can make some very, very large prints if you so chose uh, using just the equipment in our space. Uh, we also have film scanners, flatbed scanners for you to use, um, which we deal with in the black and white class where we begin to learn how to scan and translate those analog uh, film images into digital images. So here's just some samples of um, some work that was made in the digital and intermediate digital photography class. On the left is the work from the freshman level course um, of a project that was very much focused on color and exploring color relationships through the photographic medium. The right image is a project from intermediate that focused on portraiture as well as more unconventional um, forms of portraiture where the sitter isn't fully present in the image. Pratt's photo department has been really, really great. Um, we have amazing professors. Sarah and Michael have been so, so great. And Rita before them, uh, since I've been there these past two years, have taught me a lot. And even outside of teaching me what I need to know about photography, they've taught me how to be a better artist. I think that a lot of this program is self-driven and you will find yourself contemplating who you are as a person at times and I think that that's really important because you as an artist want people to see your point of view and you want them to see your perspective and the work that you're making is obviously going to be important to you so you have to find ways to show people why it's important and I think that everyone's voice matters and as long as you are willing and open-minded and focused you're going to be great like there's absolutely nothing that can stop you from being the best student that you can be and the best artist that you can be because at the end of the day you're doing all of this for yourself like you want to be a photographer in life it's not an easy profession it's something that you have to give your all to and it's something that you have to love and I think that with my peers I've found like that I don't only love photography because I get to work, you know, and make work that I think is important. I love it because of the people that I get to meet and the other photographers that I get to talk to and sharing this passion with a group of people who will, you know, hopefully someday become your community, your group, that it's really important to just try to be the best version of yourself that you can be so that in critique, you're giving good advice or you're taking good advice or you're not feeling like you're being attacked because no one is 
here to <laughs> no one is here to attack you all the work that you make is important you just have to find a way to express that and if you can't find it in the image add some text i don't know something <laughs> i think it's all about being creative and just in enjoying the experience and you'll have two more years after mwp where you get to show another group of people another community how hard working you are and how passionate you are about the craft but the department has just been great and i really really I'm glad that I decided to come here because if I didn't, I don't know where I would be. So, yeah. During the freshman year, uh, each semester you only take one photo class. But once you move into your sophomore year, you end up taking several photo classes each semester. In the fall of your sophomore year, you'll take large format photography and intermediate digital photography and history of photography. This is uh, an art history class solely focused on exploring photography's almost 200 year history and its changes and transformations as a medium over that time. So these are images from very early in the fall semester um, of some of our sophomore students with our large format cameras. Uh, I think this was on the first day of the class that we took the cameras out. So students were just beginning to learn how to use them. We also have uh, an eight by 10 large format camera. So this is a camera that shoots uh, an eight inch by 10 inch negative. So it's very large. Um, the camera itself is very, very large. You can see its scale um, you know, by the student that's standing next to it. Um, it's on a very, very heavy tripod that can hold its weight. This is in our lighting studio, which I'll show you more images of later. Um, so we pulled this out and, and all the students get to use this camera towards the end of the semester and the film is provided by the department because this is part of an in-class learning experience for everyone. So this is student work from that large format class. On the left is a piece um, by student Arlette who you'll hear her talking about her experience as a photo student later in this video. Uh, on the right is a color image. Um, so this was shot on color negative film with a, a large format camera in our studio and the film was processed at uh, an offsite lab. So our campus is located in Utica, New York, which you already know, but we have a very strong relationship with our main campus in Brooklyn, and our students have relationships with other students and faculty there. So we make a point to encourage those relationships in the fall when all of the sophomores are brought down to the Brooklyn campus to be introduced to the facilities and some of the faculty and other students there. Uh, this is a group of students from Brooklyn um, and students from Utica. Um, from when we were down there visiting and students from Utica were able to participate in a critique of photos uh, by work um, from students on the Brooklyn campus. There's also a variety of different research and travel and field trip opportunities for students. This is a sophomore who accompanied me to the Society for Photographic Education's national conference in March of 2020. Uh, we're also about 45 minutes from Syracuse, which is where Lightwork is located. And if you're unfamiliar, Lightwork is a nonprofit lab space that hosts artists in residence throughout the year and also has a lab space that's available for the public to use as long as you've been trained on their equipment. Um, they also have an exhibition space where they host exhibitions by photographers throughout the year. So you also have access to our lighting studio that is also specifically for photo students and managed um, again by the photography area. We have several different backdrops um, and we keep, um, you know, for you to use and uh, a variety of different kinds of lighting equipment that you'll be trained on how to use um, uh, sort of spread throughout both your freshman and sophomore year. Uh, we have strobe lights, which are like large um, flashes that connect to your camera and go off when you press the shutter button. Uh, we also have LED continuous lights and a variety of other kinds of 
um, tethering equipment and shooting stands and tripods and lights and, and all kinds of equipment that you'll know how to use by the time your two years are up at the Utica campus. So the intermediate digital class that you take in the fall of your sophomore year is a class that's really built on expanding uh, what you've learned in your freshman year as far as shooting and editing, but also beginning to learn how to translate your, um, you know, the photographic medium to something beyond just the conventionally printed image. So something that we explore are books and sculptural forms in this class. Photography has a very long relationship with artist books and, and just books in general. And so part of this class is about learning about that relationship and learning how to create and structure a book. Uh, so by the end of the semester, students have self-published a book that includes work that they've been making throughout that semester. So these are just a couple of samples of books that were made in that class. And this is just a variety of works that have been made um, over this past year, sort of despite the challenges that the pandemic has presented. And uh, I'm excited to see what students will be able to do once we return to fully in-person classes, in -person classes this fall. Uh, in the spring semester of your sophomore year, you take uh, two different classes. One is called Sophomore Critique, which is a class that is very much geared towards uh, learning how to sustain projects over long periods of time. So in that class, you're focused on developing a project that you work on for much of the semester. And we have several critiques throughout the semester where you're presenting um, the growth and the different iterations of that project. At the end of the semester, you participate in something called sophomore survey. Uh, where you present your research and work to a panel of faculty. Uh, the other class that you take as a sophomore in your spring semester is called Between Image and Word, which is a reading, writing, and discussion-based class that's focused um, on, uh, on just photography, um, but also learning how to write um, about photography as well. And all the texts that we read um, are those that span you know, contemporary and historical research of photography and conversations about photography. And then alongside that, you're beginning to develop a writing practice about photography as well. Hi everyone, my name is Arlette and I'm a sophomore at Pratt WP. I am a photo major and today I'm going to be sharing my experience at Pratt WP's photo department. One of the reasons why I wanted to go to Pratt WP was because it was a small school, which means there's only a certain amount of students majoring in photography. This allowed me to create friendships with all of the photo majors and my teachers. They always give helpful feedback during critique or outside of the classroom so I can better my work. I enjoyed how the photo students were able to have access to the photo lab or studios and have a selection of different types of cameras and lighting kits so we can try and experiment in our projects. There are a lot of resources at the photo department like having the load-in room and dark room to process film, having access to the studio so we can conduct our photo shoots there, and have a lot of Mac computers with Adobe programs so I can edit my images and print them out right at the photo lab. Thank you for hearing my experience about the photo department and welcome to Prime WP. So one of the other initiatives that is unique to the photo program at Pratt and WP is our in-house gallery called Study Hall. Uh, Study Hall is a gallery space that I started um, where we feature contemporary photographic artists on the walls in our studio space for semester-long exhibitions. And during this semester, we um, you know, spend a lot of time learning about those individual artists that are in the exhibition, but also spending time connecting with some of those artists as well. Study Hall is something that is truly unique about our program, and we have some very, very well-known and respected artists that um, have been featured in our exhibitions. We have a website, uh, if you just go to studyhallgallery.com, and we also have an Instagram account. Um, and if you go to either of those, you'll be able to find information about the current exhibition that's up, as well as our um, former exhibitions. Um, you know, learn about the artists that are featured in them, 
Um, the Study Hall Gallery Instagram also consistently features work by our current and former students. So please go ahead and uh, check that out. That's a great way to say um, or see what we've been up to recently and this year um, at the Pratt and WP photo program. I'm really thrilled that you've been accepted into the program and truly wish that we could be meeting in person. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this video, just reach out to me with any questions that you may have. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and people in admissions will be putting you in touch and, and giving you my contact information. So I hope to see you in the fall. Uh, it'll be great to work with you and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and thanks for your time today and I'll see you in August.